Hello. In this problem, we have a 3,200 kilogram helicopter that is flying uh, horizontally. So we have the helicopter here, something like that. It looks more like a flying a UFO, but anyways, and it is uh, carrying a crate. Okay, so the crate has a mass, smaller mass of 250 kilograms, and it is at a 20 degree angle with the vertical. So we're asked to calculate what propulsion force the helicopter needs or the rotor in the helicopter needs to move this whole thing while keeping this 20 degree angle. Okay, so big M is 3,400 kilograms, small M, the crate, is 250 kilograms, the angle with the vertical is 20 degrees. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do, as always, we have our pictorial representation, we can go to the free body diagrams. So let's start with the free body diagram of the crate. It has a tension over here that is being produced by the rope and that is attached to the helicopter. And then the weight is acting straight down, small m. And, and that's it. So, the angle here is 20 degrees, uh, which means that this angle is 70 degrees. But you know, remember that you know, sine of 20 degrees is equal to cosine of 70 degrees. sine of 70 is cosine of 20, right? So we only need one angle. We don't really need multiple. Just, you know, we will keep track of that. And so this is a uh, crate. And over here, I'm gonna put the helicopter. So the helicopter has some thrust or a propulsion is called prop in this direction. Actually, I want to use this color for forces. It has its own weight, mg, capital mg, and it has a tension. The angle here is 20 degrees. Okay, so we go, we can go from this helicopter. We can go from the free body diagram to the equations. So for the crate, is um, everything that I'm gonna write over here for now is about the crate. So, sum of forces in X. Uh, we have the tension. And then it will be in X, it will be the cosine of 70. So that's the sine of 20 degrees, so sine of theta. 
And that's all we have in X. So this is mass, small m, so mass of the crate, times acceleration of the crate in X. Sum of forces in Y, we have negative mg. And then we have the vertical component of the tension. So that will be uh, sine 70, so cosine of 20. So T cosine theta, because theta is 20 degrees. That's it. The problem do mentions that it is flying horizontally. That means that there is no acceleration, no movement in the vertical direction, only horizontally. So this is equal to zero. So that means that the tension is mg divided by cosine theta. And so we can plug this one, the tension, we can plug it into the other equation, the equation of x to get that mg uh, sine theta divided by cosine theta. So this sine and this cosine is equal, it's equal to mass times acceleration of the crate in x. We can get rid of the masses since we have them on both sides. And sine divided by cosine is tangent. So this is g tangent theta. And this is a pretty cool equation. Uh, you know, if you look at it, it depends, it doesn't depend on the mass at all. It only depends on gravity and, and the angle, the angle with the vertical. So, you know, if you're driving in your car and you have something, some rope or whatever, uh, hanging from your, um, your mirror, um, you know, when you accelerate, it moves, uh, it makes an angle, right? Kind of like this. Uh, if you are accelerating forward or it will move in this direction, if you are uh, pushing the brakes. And so, this angle is related to your acceleration. So tangent of 45 degrees is equal to one. So if this angle is 45 degrees, that is one G. And if it's more than 45 degrees, that's pretty bad. That means that something really crazy is happening, it will be over 1G. Uh, typically, it's going to be much smaller, maybe I don't know, 5 degrees or something. Sometimes it's very perceptible. But yeah, you know, having this hanging from the mirror helps you, well, it tells you what your acceleration, what the acceleration of the car is. So, you know, this equation we want, it tells us what is the acceleration of the crate. And we have an acceleration constraint. You know, the, the two objects are moving together. They're held by this rope. And so the acceleration in, of the crate in X is equal to the acceleration of the helicopter in X, which is just the acceleration. You know, it's the only one we have. There's no acceleration in Y. So we can get rid of this one and get rid of this one. That is the acceleration um, of the whole thing. All right, so let me see, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it over here. It's one of the things that we know now. Acceleration is G tangent theta. All right, um, this one is also 
good to remember. So I guess I'll keep it there. T equals mg divided by cosine theta. Good. So now let's look at the, the helicopter. So sum of forces in X, this is a helicopter, this is a crate. In X, we have minus tension, and it is the horizontal component of these. So um, it will be sine of theta. Okay. And then we have the uh, X component of the propulsion. which is one of the things that we want to know. That is equal, that equals mass of the helicopter, so big M, times the acceleration of the whole system. Sum of forces in Y of minus the vertical component of the tension. So now this one is a cosine cosine theta. We also have the weight, so minus big M G and the Y component of the propulsion, which is the other thing that we want to know. We want to know the, the propulsion, so we need it, its components. This is not accelerating in the vertical direction, so this is equal to zero. So um, I guess we can get either component first, doesn't really matter. So the Y component is equal to this one, these two are negative. So we can put them on the other side as positive. This tension is equal to mg divided by cosine theta. This mg uh, cosine theta divided by cosine theta. Cosine and cosine, we can get rid of them. So that's just mg. And here you know, we can factor out the, factorize the, this term, the sum. And so it's just G, show you so that it looks prettier. Right? So the mass of the helicopter plus the mass of the crate times gravity. And this makes a lot of sense. This is the whole, the whole mass, right? So if you consider the system as one, you know that the, the weight it will be M plus M, you know, times G, that'll be their weight. And we want the propul uh, uh, propulsion to be uh, the same in order to cancel them out. So this one will be negative, this one is positive. So the proportion in the y direction is um, 3,200 plus 250. So that's 3,450 kilograms times G. So that is um, 33,000. 810 newtons. So that is one answer. Uh, where should I put it? Um, 
I'm going to put it over here. I just don't want to forget about it. So F propulsion in the y direction is 3 times 10 to the 4 um, newtons. All right, and then for the uh, x component, the x component of the propulsion is mass and then the new acceleration, we have it over here. So it's mg tangent of theta. And then we have this negative tension. So we're going to put it over here positive plus tension sine theta. And the tension put over here is mg divided by cosine theta. So mg divided by cosine theta. Sine divided sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, that's tangent. Now we can factorize, we have G tangent theta. So this is big M plus small m, so the mass of the helicopter plus the mass of the crate g tangent theta. So we know that the combined mass is 3,450 um, g. Actually, that's the tangent of theta first because we have not calculated it at all over here. Tangent of 20 degrees is 0.364, so times 9.8 meters per second squared, times 3,450. And so this is equal to 12,305. Uh, Newtons. Okay. So that is, I guess, a more typical unit for this will be in kilonewtons. So this will be 30. I missed. I think this was erased. I think it was 3.4. Oh, I have it in the calculator. Yeah, 33.8. So 3.4, mm, 34 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And so this times 10 to the 3, we can just write it as kilonewtons. This one is uh, 12, about 12.3. 12 kilonewtons. Okay. So we have the propulsion in the x direction. It's positive. Obviously, you want to keep it moving to the right or to the left. It's horizontal. And uh, in the y direction. So you know, pretty useful problem. Now you can calculate your acceleration by installing a simple device on your car. Just put a string on the rear view mirror. All right, hope you enjoyed this problem. Thank you.